Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. I hope you're all having a fantastic weekend and we are back today with the third episode of our raiding every legendary in the game series. We've raided all the magic affinities. We've raided all the spirit affinity and today we're raiding all of the force affinity legendary champions in Raid Shadow Legends for May, the start of May 2023. Whew. We'll be back, of course, with Void Legendaries, and then I think we'll do a final video putting them all together. Uh, I've actually been really enjoying the comments on this series, seeing your thoughts on the champions and stuff. So I think for the final video, we'll actually come in, put all of the champions in together, and there's definitely like a few champions are going to be moving up or down a tier based off of your feedback. So again, thank you for that. Uh, keep it up. <laughs> um, yeah, I, like I said, I really enjoy seeing your thoughts and opinions. Uh, also, something for you guys. We do have a giveaway on my Discord right now. So jump over to my Discord server and join. Uh, the link should be in the description down below or on the info page, the about page of my YouTube channel. Uh, it's in every single video, right? And you can find that in the giveaway entry channel. We do have the first monthly giveaway. We've got two giveaways every month as part of the content creator program. And we also typically have extra ones as well. Like we did the biggest CC fails. And we got a really nice giveaway for that, but which was uh, three days ago or so. Uh, but yeah, the monthly CC giveaway, this is for 540 gems. There will be five winners and it's up for two days. It will be, uh, the giveaway will be closed on the 9th of May, early in the day. And uh, yeah, I need you to send over your UM numbers, um, your UM codes in game uh, by the end of the day. So the UM code, the 9th of May, if you win, you come in here, you go into info and you click copy ID and you send me this info. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. That is how it works. Uh, so yeah, little giveaway for you. Also a quick note, um, I often do, uh, let me see, nub announcements. I often do, we also put promo codes in here, but I also always, nearly always do a live stream for CVC. There will not be a live stream for CVC this Tuesday because we're bringing our puppy. She's just about 13 weeks old, but she has some genetic abnorm abnormalities, we believe, uh, basically with her, 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 her your urination system, her plumbing isn't quite right. So we're going to be bringing her to a specialist vet up in Dublin. Um, so yeah, that's happening on Tuesday morning. And hopefully they'll be able to look at her, do some scans, do some tests and properly diagnose it. And then most likely it's going to require surgery to treat it. Uh, but yeah, we're doing that on Tuesday. So I won't be here. Might do a short stream later on Tuesday or on Wednesday or something. We'll see. But anyway, enough babbling. Let's get in. And uh, let's do this thing. Here we go. So actually, let me let me move all of these over out of the way. Here we go. Let's move them. I don't know down into the D tier, out of the way. And let's start off with the Banner Lords. We have Black Knight. We have Helior, Daltus Dragonbane, ooh, and Manaya. Right, an interesting set of legendaries here. Kind of underwhelming for the most part. These are pretty weak. Black Knight for me. Black Knight is a C tier champion. He's got like he does some. Decent things. He's got decent provoke on his A1. He's got decent protection on his A2. Um, but that's sort of it. He's just sort of very, he's like, okay, he's okay. Uh, you get him early on, he might be useful. He might even come in and fill in for you later on if you need one of those things, but he's not brilliant. Helior, again, likewise, Helior for me goes in the C tier. I do, I always have hope for Helior. I want Helior to be good, but he just never ends up being super useful. Decent for some Doom Tower bosses. Um, but it's, it's kind of intensive to book him. Sort of the problem Helior has is that he needs too many stats to be good. He needs lots of, of defense. He needs crit rate, crit damage. He needs resistance. He kind of wants HP. He wants speed. He kind of needs everything to be really good. The more stats they add to the game and let us build up, the better he gets, I guess. Staltus. Staltus is tricky. Manaya, I'd also put into C tier. We got three C tier legendaries starting us off today. Wow, that's rough. Manaya though, she's just pretty bad. Literally the only purpose of Manaya really is to uh, do the combo with uh, Koronar. That's that's kind of her only purpose. And it's not crazy strong. Um, like you put her in with Koronar and maybe she's maybe she's an A tier just because of the benefits mostly that she gives him. Maybe she's A at best. Um, without Koronar, she's, she's a D tier champion. I'm going to put her in C tier overall. Daltus is a tricky one to rank. Staltus is very tricky. I am tempted to put Staltus in S tier as just a massive defensive nuker who's also now become extremely valuable for dragon hard mode, right? Hard mode dragon. He throws all the debuffs back. It's really good. I think for now, I'll put him in A tier. But let me know what you think. I think he's probably an A tier champion. Just really, really, really strong. Brilliant for Doom Tower waves as well. Um, 
That's a tricky one. He's so good for Doom Tower Waves. He's so solid for Arena. He's great as well for Hard Mode Dragon. Tricky. Tricky. Will we put him in S or we put him in A? I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted. His name starts with an S. Let's put him in S tier. That's the biggest reason. Definitely won't get any comments about that ranking. <laughs> right, we got Shiromani, Lanatharul, Deliana, and Basilius Rowanus representing the High Elves. Again, pretty underwhelming overall, I would say. Shiromani. Uh, I guess Shiromani is sort of B tier. She comes in with an A, we freeze, and some healing. A1, a little bit of a freeze. That's about it, though. I know people are kind of excited about her for Fire Knight Hard, but she hasn't ended up really being any much good for it, to be honest. Um, so Shiromani's kind of underwhelming. Decent control and healing, uh, which is useful for progressing in the game. So I'll put her I'll put her in B. Lanathril is definitely B. Uh, maybe A, probably B. Look, ally attack, AoE attack with shielding. Solid. You know, he's solid, solidly average, I would say. Uh, again, he's pretty all right for Fire Knight Hard. That's kind of the thing that's brought him up. Uh, he's, he's okay. He's okay. Very B. Deliana. Hmm. The funny thing is, I would say Deliana is actually a B-tier champion as well, right? Good AoE damage, uh, decent healing, some block buffs, some affinity stuff. Yeah, it's quite interesting. I feel like Deliana has sort of that Sill of the Drakes. In fact, it's sort of the case with a lot of these free legendaries. I say even Vizix goes into this category as well. A lot of the free legendaries are actually fairly average. They're sort of B-tier. They're good, but they're not crazy. But it's the fact that you would get them for free so early on in the game that makes them insane. That's sort of my take on it. I think Daliana is kind of B tier. I think she's a solid champion, definitely going to help you in a lot of different areas. Um, but, you know, she's going to fall off. She's not going to be as good as a lot of the others. Basilius Rowanus, I'm actually going to put up in the A tier, though. I actually think this guy is super underrated. Um, you guys know I like to rag on Astralon. And, and not like Astralon too much. I feel like Rowanus is like Astralon, but better. So he has AoE stun. That can also decrease turn meter on a four turn cooldown. Uh, he's red affinity, which is nice. But it's his A2, which is great. Triple hitter, ignoring defense, shield, block damage, and 50% defense on a three turn cooldown. He can kill. Uh, he can blow up Rotos really easily. He can kill people past ultimate death knight protection. He ignores shields and block damage, which is really useful. His A1 can steal some buffs, which is okay. I think Rowanus is actually super solid and super slept on. So I'm putting him up in A. I think this is a really, really good nuker that doesn't get much attention. Uh, Errol up next. Abess. And uh, yeah, Glacea as well, right? These are the uh, Sacred Order Force Affinity Legendaries. Errol buffed recently. I think he's definitely an A tier nuker. Force Affinity hits really, really, really hard. You can build him with lower crit rate as well because he just has built-in bonus a 30% crit rate. Definitely an A-tier nuker. Really, really good. Um, yeah, very solid. Abess. I think Abess is a B-tier nuker. Um, look, she hits hard. Got a couple of AoEs. Brings decreased defense. Solid B-tier. Uh, not as good as these two, but still very, very solid. Glacea, I'm going to put in B as well. I'm actually pretty high on Glacea right now. I think she's pretty cool for Live Arena in particular. Obviously, it's a bit of a dice roll, but she does come in with this passive where her skills can't be put on cooldown, and she can uh, block cooldown increase effects. This is super unique. I think it's pretty badass. I think she could be a pretty good live arena champion. Not, to be fair, not super useful elsewhere, but yeah, I'm going to put her in B tier just because of that. I think it's kind of unique utility and deserves to be there. Right, Barbarian's up next with Cantra and Elder Scar. This is a difficult one for me to rank. This is difficult. Yeah. I think Cantra does go up into A tier. I think it's just a provoker and a debuffer. Very, very good at that. Kind of just wave control for Doom Tower and for Hydra in particular. But I think for a Hydra champion, she's so strong. She should definitely be an A tier. But I think her the places in the game where she's useful are a bit limited. So that's why I'm putting her, her just there. Uh, Elder Skarg is, again, really difficult to rank. I'm going to put him as a B. B tier champion overall, I think. Uh, he has really, really big single target damage. He has the AoE burn as well. Kind of decent. He's kind of a weird champion, right? I, I do think he's kind of underrated. Slips under the radar a little bit. He can do some fun stuff. Uh, I've heard, you know, Grat, one of uh, the, the, the subs here, one of the community members that's done some fun stuff, has been using him in Live Arena. That he's decent there. So, yeah, I'm going to put him in B, and we shall see. Ooh, we've got it. We've got some interesting ones here. Ooh, the Ogrens. Gurptuk, Gerda, and Korrigar Deathbell. Okay, let's deal with the obvious ones first. Gurptuk. He's a C tier champion. Look, he brings in the block buffs. He's got some decent healing. Not a bad Hydra champion. 
but not super useful. Gerda, I think, okay, Gerda, I'll put in C as well. Gerda's pretty rubbish. She could go into the D tier. She could, but I'm going to leave her in C for now because she's not, she's not entirely useless. Like, you might actually use Gerda for a little bit as an AoE poisoner, um, but she's, she's kind of rubbish, to be honest. She's pretty weak. Could, could potentially be D tier. Korrigar, now this is tricky. Korrigar is definitely A. He may be even S tier. This champion is actually nuts. The problem I have with Korrigar is that he's very much an untested champion. I haven't seen him doing any S tier stuff, though I think he has the potential, right? Ally protection and strengthen on a three turn. Then on a three turn, AoE attack with a 30% turn meter fill and a full team cleanse. He's healing on his A1. He's increasing resistance on defense on himself and his whole team. HP Auric, great base stats. I think this guy is, is really good. Like he's got crazy good ratings here for some of this stuff. Demon Lord should probably be S tier. I, 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 you know what? I'm going to be bold here. Let me know if I'm wrong. I'm going to put Kargar up in the S tier. I think this guy is super good. Again, the issue is I haven't seen him in any like super high end content, which is sort of the, the, the qualifier for S tier for me is they need to be sort of the best of the best uh, for end game content that can't really be replicated almost. I don't know if he quite makes it. I'm, I'm going to put him there for now. We don't have many in the S tier. So, you know, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Maybe that will change uh, in the final video here based off of your feedback. We've got Fushan, Razin, Pytheon, and Skull Lord Vargal representing the Lizardmen. Fushan, I think Fushan is, is again a B tier champion. Uh, he sort of excels in, in like uh, Demitha, unkillable compositions because he brings in a speed aura and I think decreased defense as well. So yeah, he's decent. He's just like, he's a force nuker. He's decent. He's got a good, good aura being a speed aura. I feel like he's B tier. He's a champion you might use. He's a champion you might not use, basically. Razin Scarhide. I actually feel like Razin, honestly, he's kind of a C tier champ. Razin isn't that good. Um, again, he sort of has the same thing as Deliana. You know what? Let's put Razin in B. Let's put him in B. B, B, B. He's the same deal, though, as, as like Deliana and all of that. You get him potentially for not for free, but you get him very easily as a permanent fusion, potentially uh, early enough in the game. And he could be very useful for you because you get him early, but he's sort of fallen off. He's a defense damage dealer. He's got good single target damage and decreased defense, weakened single target. That's useful. He's got an AOE with the full term meter deplete, but it's a very long cooldown. He's a, he, okay. B, I think B tier. He's definitely a B tier. He's not better than that though, for sure. Vargal, I'm actually going to put Skull Lord Vargal into A. I think he's a brilliant Hydra champion. He's also brilliant against um, the Scarab boss in Doom Tower Hard. He's really, really good for that with the, uh, the destroying max HP thing that he does. So yeah, I think Vargal actually is a bit better than people give him credit for. And then Pytheon, really no question. This is definitely the uncontested S tier champion so far. You could definitely argue about the other two for sure. But Pytheon, I think everyone's going to agree, is S tier through and through. The AoE revive, reducing your damage. AoE cleanse, healing, everything. This guy's insane. Right, next up we have the Skinwalkers with Warchief, Mighty Uko, Nishak Verminlord, and Brachus the Shifter. Uh, Warchief, C tier, definitely. He's got the single target provoke, which is really good, but that's about it. Um, again, he's not entirely, like most of these C tier champions, you might use them a little bit. You might use them for Magma Dragon. You might use them a bit in Hydra early on. Uh, but he's not as good at all as the better options. So not useless, but not very useful either. Mighty Uko, again, for me, is going to be an S tier champion. I think he's so good in Arena. He is so good in Hydra. He's going to be brilliant as well for Doom Tower waves and all of that. Just the control that he brings, stripping the buffs, the decrease attack, the AoE revive, the passive. He's got so much in his kit. He's brilliant. Nishak, I'm also going to put in S tier, actually. I think for the AoE bombs, uh, the poisons, his ability to solo uh, dungeons, just bring tons of damage to the dungeons. His ability for Doom Tower as well, just bombing and blowing up Doom Tower waves, bombing, blowing up Arena. I think this champion is just really, really good. I, I put him as S tier. I do. And then, ooh, Brachus. Brachus for me is a B tier champ. Uh, kind of an underrated champion, to be honest. But Brachus comes in really good, really, really good single target damage. He does bring increased attack as well on a nuker. AoE, in fact, which is very unique. So for live arena, I think that's a pretty big deal. And he's got a cool passive as well. I think Brachus is very underrated, uh, very overlooked. And he's a solid B tier champion. Next up, we've got the Orcs. We've Gomlock, the Doom Tower hard legendary, who's got about to be buffed. Robar and King Garog. Okay, the easy one for me to rank is Robar in the B tier. 
very similar to a best force affinity aoe nuker does bring decreased defense hits really hard simple straightforward b tier uh you might use him you might not uh king garag pretty similar i'd say he's worse though overall right king garag is probably c tier as like a force nuker that's not bringing anything particularly special he hits really hard uh you might use him but uh he doesn't have sort of the other things that these guys have and then gomlock gomlock should probably go in the b tier uh he's got a really good a2 now where he steals turn meter that's getting buffed um i don't know maybe gomlock will go up to a if the buff is really good i'm kind of skeptical though i think he's probably b tier um, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. Again, we haven't got to play test or see people using him since the buff. So I think he's probably B, very good against Dark Fae uh, and things like that. So I'll put him there. We've got the demon spawn next. We have Drexthar, Kandrafon. Okay, we, we're start Sissia, yeah. the demon spawn are bringing it. Vassal of the Seal. Okay, not bringing it so much there. And with you. Woo wee. Wow. Okay. The top of the, the, the top of the tier list is about to get padded here. Drexthar, definitely an A-tier champion for me. One of the best and longest lasting uh, Doom Tower, uh, not Doom Tower, one of the longest lasting free legendaries. You get him fragments from the Bazaar. You can get him very early in the game and he stands the test of time. I think he really does. Decent Hydra champion, decent for like Spider Normal, that sort of stuff. Just brilliant though for Doom Tower. So good for Doom Tower. Brilliant accuracy aura. His passive pumping out burns. Even has an AoE provoke. He does actually hit. He hits really hard. You can build him as a defensive nuker and he smacks too. I think Drexar is A tier. Kandrafon. For me, Kandrafon is S tier. As just an AoE nuker that uh, makes himself tanky. He's an, an attack based nuker that protects himself with his passive. He can provide his own increased attack as well. I think Kandrafon is just extremely, extremely good. Sissia, for me, Sissia has got to be S tier as well. AoE burns, AoE decrease defense weaken, explodes burns, can extend burns as well. Sissia is super useful for spider, both normal, even useful for spider hard. If you've got the right champions, you can do a HP. I think the fastest way you can do spider hard is either with a bunch of Acrisias or with like a HP burn explosion team still works. And Sissia fits into that, I think still. So yeah, I think she's really good. Brilliant for Hydra. Doom Tower, she's going to help you clear waves too quickly if you want. Vassal of the Seal. He's got to be a C tier champ. He does have some use, right? I think for new Ice Golem Hard, right? Ice Golem Hard, he's not bad. He puts out burns, he extends burns, and uh, he equalizes HP. He puts out decrease attack AoE. Does he put out burns or does he just extend them? I don't remember, but he's sort of C tier. I think he could be useful for, for Ice Golem Hard. Maybe when they bring out like stage 20 of Ice Golem Hard or stage 25 or whatever, he'll jump up here maybe to like a solid B tier champ, something like that. Uh, I'm putting him C for now. And then with here... I'm going to put Withier probably in A tier where she's really, really good. Just, just crazy amounts of healing. Just tons of healing, cleansing, protecting your team. Uh, I think she's A tier. Uh, I don't know. Maybe because I'm putting Korrigar in S. She's very similar, isn't she? Her and Korrigar are quite similar. He's more about preventing damage. She's more about healing it up. Hmm. That, this is arguable. I could definitely see people putting her in S. I, uh, so yeah, maybe we'll do a little swapsie there. I'm putting her there for now, though. Next up, we've Undead, Skartorsis, Bad Elkazar, Blood Gorged, and Ultimate Death Knight. Ooh, ooh. Okay, Skartorsis, I think he's like a C tier. Not very useful champion, honestly. Bad El, definitely an A tier. He's, he's not as good as he used to be. This guy used to be S tier. Um, with the newer content in the game, not as good. But look, AoE poisons, AoE healing, the cleansing as well. Um, look, great champion. There's a lot of healing. There's a lot of cleansing. There's a lot of AoE poison. So for Doom Tower Wave, some older dungeons, soloing them and stuff, pretty solid. Blood Gorged, I'm going to put in the B tier. Um, kind of live arena, become stronger. I think he can also put skills on cooldown a little bit and he can block revive a bit. So yeah, he doesn't hit super hard and he's force affinity. So he's got a bunch of downsides. But um, yeah, I think he's a solid nuker to consider for that. Ultimate Death Knight, a or S? I'm probably going to put him in S tier. I think Ultimate Death Knight has to be S tier. His passive is so unique. So I think he's very good. You could build him quick and use him as like just a, uh, you know, someone that's pumping out heals and built with accuracy. He's doing crowd control. He's healing. That's just like a, a great support champ as you're progressing through all the dungeons, really, in Doom Tower. And then later in the game, you can switch him into like a stone skin build. He can still work for you decently okay in Hydra, provoking even, and stuff like that. And then for Arena, he's just so insanely good for Arena later in the game. And he gives you a way to beat a lot of compositions you wouldn't otherwise beat. So he's got to be up there. Uh, we've got, ooh, Xavier. 
Ooh, interesting. Dark Elves. Safia, Moranix, Vizier, and Chromax Moonblood. Well, as you guys know, if you watch if you've been watching my videos, Chromax Moonblood, I, I rated him as the worst legendary in the game. Um, and so he's going into the D tier. This champion just sucks. I haven't even quite got him on my two and a half year account. I'm gonna get him. I think I'm two secret rooms off getting him, so I'm about to get him very soon. Uh, but this guy is total trash. He sucks. He really needs a big buff. We'll see if they ever do it. He could be fun if they buffed him. He looks cool, but man, he sucks. Um, Zavia, I'm going to put Zavia into the A tier. Uh, you guys were kind of like, eh, Elinarl, you rated Elinarl too high in S tier. She should be A tier. So yeah, I'm going to put Zavia into the A tier. Poison Explosion um, and puts out AoE poisons as well. Really solid champ. Great champ. Really belongs to all of these really uh, strong champions. Um, so yeah, she belongs in there. Moranix, I'm going to put into the B tier. AoE Hex with decreased defense is pretty unique. Uh, sort of AoE damage dealer. Doesn't do crazy damage, but look, she's got good utility. I think she's a solid B tier damage dealer. I use her in my spider team, spider hard farming team. And Vizier Ovalis, probably B tier as well. Uh, brilliant clan boss champion, Demon Lord. Brilliant Demon Lord champ. Uh, probably really good against some Doom Tower bosses. I don't have him, so I'm not super familiar. I think he can do some stuff in Arena as well, spreading bombs. So yeah, I think he's a solid B-tier champ. He's got some good stuff that he does, uh, and then some stuff that he doesn't do. <laughs> That's best explanation ever. Right, we're on to the Knight's Revenant. Uh, yeah, Knights of the Revenant variety right here. We've got Bystophis, Thea of the Tomb Angel, Mother Cybel, and Versa of the Grim. So Bystophis, I think he's a C-tier. Not great. Uh, not entirely useless, but not great. Um, I always get I always get mixed up between these guys. Let me just make sure I'm I'm rating the right ones, like Scartorsis and Bystophis and all these guys. They always confuse me. Um, this is the guy. Yeah, he's got the AoE block active skills and decreased defense. It's a pretty good move. It's on a four turn though. Maybe he should be maybe he should be in B tier because of that move. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm gonna put Bystophis. I think that move is strong enough. Got such a long cooldown. I'm going to put him in B tier. I think that's a great move, but it does have a very long cooldown. Let me know. Maybe I should demote him. Thea is definitely, unfortunately, going into C. She's just been power crept. I did a video recently on power crept legendaries. I think Thea is really power crept. Yes, she hits really hard, but you need Hex out there. And there's just so many, you know, champions in the game now that hit really hard that don't need that setup. Like Kandrafon hits crazy hard. Nishak hits crazy hard. They don't need anywhere near the setup that Thea does to do the damage. So she's pretty disappointing. Versal of the Grim, definitely a, a B tier champion for me. Um, you know, good defense. Uh, ally protection for your team with increased defense, right? He's got the AoE attack with Leech. He can do a bit of provoking. He's just this solid, you know, defensive champion. Solid protector. Uh, he's like Korrigar, but not as good, basically. He can hit really hard, but it's difficult to set it up. And then Mother Cybele, definitely A tier for me. She's really, uh, keeps improving in the game, honestly. Fantastic champion for Hydra. I think she could do some fun stuff in Arena for you as well. Uh, and then with Sand Devil's Necropolis, she brings in that Revive on Death, AoE, on a three turn. So she opens up a bunch of Revive on Death compositions. Brilliant aura as well. Uh, yeah, Mother Cybele, since the release of Hydra and Sand Devil, etc., is really just uh, her, her stocks are climbing. So she's an A tier. On to the dwarves next, we've got Nari the Lucky, Mountain King. Borgar the Elder. Oh, and Granjar. Granjar. Wah, wah. All right, Granjar, let's do you first. You go straight down to the D tier to join Chromax Moonblood. Uh, straight out of Doom Tower Hard Secret Rooms and straight into the D tier. This champion is just absolutely terrible. I, I, I just don't get the purpose of this champion. If they ever add, like, Nightmare Doom Tower uh, and there's a super hard Frost Spider, then yeah, okay, maybe he'll be okay for that. But yeah, it just seems like a really bad champion, let's be honest. Um, Borgar. I think he goes into B tier. He's got the increased speed and resistance on a four turn, AoE shielding. Look, he just sort of protects your team. He's got some nice buffs. He's decent, but not, not super useful. Um, Mountain King. I think Mountain King is a B tier nuker as well. Single target nuker, very tanky. You could build him and bolster. He does hit really hard, um, but not crazy hard. Yeah, I, I think you know he's single target without an extra turn mechanic. I think he's a B tier champ. Um, he does get played a decent amount. Uh, like, yeah, I, I think he's only okay, though. I put him there. And then Nari the Lucky. Nari has a lot of potential. I'm going to put him in B tier for now, but I think Nari does have a ton of potential with the AoE decrease resistance and decrease accuracy. He is one to watch. I think, again, with further content in the game, he, he is one that could definitely jump up into the A tier, right? I think Nari has the potential to climb up. Um, I just haven't seen people really using him much right now. 
I think he, I'll put him in B tier for now. But yeah, I, I think Nari stocks could rise with like further hide, hydro difficulties and stuff like that. He could be really important for people. We'll see. We'll see. Shadowkin, decent bunch here. We've got Harima, Yoshi the Drunkard, and Noble. Noble, I'll, I will put in the C tier. He can do some really good crowd control stuff. Um, but I think he's a C tier champion overall. Like he can do some good turn meter control, cycle through things. You have to build sort of a team around him specifically. He's okay for, you know, Doom Tower waves. And that's kind of it, pretty much. Yoshi, I will put into A. I actually really like Yoshi. Speed Aura, he puts out burns as well. But bringing increased accuracy uh, with increased attack and an AoE True Fear. He's a great champion for Arena for setting up bomb champions with increased attack and accuracy. Uh, just a great Arena champion in general. Very solid. And uh, yeah, also really, really good for Doom Tower waves and wave control. Right, Boosting up your accuracy and your attack. Fearing the enemy, he's got stuns in the A1, putting out burns and decreased accuracy. Great champ for Doom Tower, Speed Aura. Yeah, very versatile. I'm a big fan of, of Yoshi. And then Harima has to go into the S tier, the best defensive nuker in the game right now. Absolutely broken passive, uh, where she reduces ignore defense effects. That's insane for Arena. Really good against Demon Spawn in Arena as well. Then she's got massive AoE nukes. Her defense scales up. She lowers the enemy's defense permanently as well with her A2 get extra aoe attacks uh harima is is she's nuts she's absolutely crazy power creep 101 harima <laughs> and then finally we've got green warden ruark and Sirsha the char two of the newer champions as well from the sylvan watchers green warden ruark he's definitely a c tier he's like ultimate death knight but bad basically um maybe he'll be useful if you don't have an ultimate death knight or in live arena, if Ultimate Death Knight gets taken, maybe he'll be okay. But um, I'm kind of not super convinced. He seems just pretty weak. I think he's C tier. And Searsha the Chard maybe has some use for Ice Golem hard. But I'm going to put her down in the C tier as well. You have to spend a lot of money. I think it's a, it's a few thousand. You have to spend a few thousand in the game to get Searsha the Chard. And she's just pretty underwhelming uh, when you do get her. Like, like I said, maybe Ice Golem hard. She's okay for Ice Golem hard. But... That's sort of the only place where she's good. Uh, she should arguably be D tier. I'm not going to include like the money thing too much here. I'm just trying to rate the champions as they stand. If I was including the cost, uh, she would be D tier, but I'm not going to do that. We're just going to rank the champions as good as they are. And there we go. Um, yeah, okay. How do I feel about this? For the most part, pretty good. I think the biggest questions for me are, you know, Staltus. He's kind of niche with the dragon hard stuff, but I think he probably deserves to be S. And then Korgar, like I said, is a little bit unproven. Uh, but apart from that, I think there we go. Pretty balanced set, honestly, from the Force Affinity. We've got a lot of B tier champions, I will say. That sort of stands out. Lots of B tier. Um, lots of sort of middling ones. Ones that are you know, they're good, but not crazy good. Um, the A tier, we've got a respectable enough A tier. Uh, and a good S tier. I will say, it's kind of interesting doing this and reflecting on the different affinities. I will say that the Force affinity, compared to Spirit, I actually feel like the Spirit affinity A tier is actually a lot stronger than the Force affinity A tier, even though I've ra ranked them in the same tier. Um, like Spirit just had a lot more champions in there and a lot more compelling champions too, I would say. Um, yeah, sort of interesting doing them back to back. I definitely feel like Magic was, I don't know, I can't remember Magic now, it's been two days or something, that's way too long for me to remember, but Spirit stands out as being being quite a bit stronger than Force, would be my impression. Let me know what you think though, like I said, really happy to hear your feedback, and then to combine everything together as best I can. Obviously it's always going to be biased, but yeah, it'll be fun to see the final tier list come together. Stay tuned for Void Affinity, um, where one would hope to be a, a very dominant S and A tier. They're Void Legendaries after all, they should be really strong. We'll see, though. Is that actually the case, and how do I rank them? Thank you for watching. I will see you all next time. Goodbye.